discussion about the uh, short uh, for children and uh, with the stress on the distribution of the uh, films for children um, and uh, uh, I would like to welcome our guests which gonna present you uh, the uh, institutions and the ideas for the distribution of uh, children shorts but I'm here only just to, just to say that the information in the program uh, it's uh, wrong because we have a different moderator, but this is the only the only part of, of my job here because our moderator is Gert Hermans with some um, the Gert Hermans is uh, taking the mics and he's gonna introduce uh, our guests and he's gonna moderate uh, our meeting and that's it. So and I hope to see you tomorrow at the pitching and at about uh, and at the winning ceremony. I hope that we're gonna see each other there. Right, so goodbye. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for closing the door. Although I was wondering, we might need some extra oxygen because um, there's quite a lot of you who turned up. Do you know what to expect? As you just had uh, screenings from two brilliant studios, brilliant films from brilliant artists, and the next hour is going to be. Uh, you want to sleep? Uh, that could be comfortable, yes. <laughs> the next hour is going to be three male talking heads and no more than that. There's, there's no uh, visuals, no PowerPoint. Uh, but besides the three talking heads, I'm counting on some more talking heads from the crowd sooner or later. Uh, first, let me please introduce myself. My name is Gert Hermans. I work for a distribution company in Belgium called Yekino. Uh, for Quite some decades already we've been uh, distributing children's film in Belgium. And um, I also represent this uh, European umbrella, this European network called ECFA, which is uh, the umbrella of European children's film professionals, uh, for which I also do uh, some voluntary work. Um, and within this uh, distribution company, Yekino, we have some experience with short films, which I would like to share with you today. Um, but first, um, I want to tell you about a phone call that I received uh, two weeks ago, where I was called by a, a film producer from Belgium, who just finished a series for television, an animated series. And they called me and said, we would like to talk about possibilities for compiling these episodes from this TV series in one film compilation to screen in the cinemas. Because, he said, I think this product is too beautiful to just put it out on television. Which was kind of remarkable. Over the years we have been fighting to find in Belgium this, this uh, to find cinemas willing to screen short film compilations, which is usually um, six to eight short films put together in a program that will be in between 40 and 65 minutes. We have been fighting so many years to convince all the parties involved, to convince producers, to convince um, schools, to convince the audience, to convince the cinemas, and now a producer called us to say that his series was too beautiful to be put out on TV. So it will be on TV, but first he wants to have a campaign with us in the cinemas. Uh, which for me marked a very important moment. It, did, it marked for me the fact that finally we might have convinced uh, many of the players uh, to work with short films for children. Um, what I told you about ECFA, just to finish my introduction. Um, for ECFA, I did a survey a couple of years ago on um, distributing short films in short film compilations in cinemas, which uh, gave us some interesting results that you can find on the internet or that I will mention throughout our discussion. Um, and we also did uh, a couple of compilations uh, based on 
and for instance gender related topics we had this project the european project about homophobia uh, which we tried to counter with uh, a dvd with films different perspectives on the world of uh, lgtb people in europe and we also did uh, with ECFA we also did this database recently with 100 european short films and of course it is the plan to update this database throughout the next couple of years so this is my connection with short films um, my colleagues in the panel today are alexander stein who is made out of short film more or less um, and who will now introduce himself Dobre Wetsche, I'm Alex Stein from Interfilm Berlin and I'm here in a triple function basically and I try to cover as much as I can. So uh, on one hand I'm the festival producer of the International Short Film Festival Berlin, running since 32 years. I'm not doing a dead one, I hope you still can see that. I'm just in it for the last 18 years. Um, parallel we also do the Cookie and Teen Screen uh, Short Film Festival in Berlin. This is just dedicated to children and uh, teenage short films as a festival running parallel to Interfilm and I'm also the CEO of the company Interfilm Berlin which is, uh, has also a distribution leg and we have a catalogue of 300 short films every year we take 20 to 30 new short films into our catalogue and in the last 3-4 years more and more also children films but we will talk about that later and also as um, with Interfilm Berlin we're part of the European network of Short Circuit which was founded four years ago and has around I think 18 members uh, it started with five members in the beginning and it's a network of uh, European distributors just for short film talking about distributors mainly also bring films to the cinema and to the screen not just for TV um, so that's my function here and as he said, I made up of a short film just to give a brief background. Um, after my studies of theatre and film, obviously, I started out as a, an animation filmmaker myself, uh, ran through the festival circuit, won a couple of prizes, realizing that I couldn't live from making short films. Um, getting, getting, um, I was getting sick in the nineties of doing music videos and commercials, then did a lot of work for theatre and projections. Uh, for uh, theatre backdrops. Um, through that, I made a little career and I started to invest the money then in the company Interfilm Berlin uh, in the year 2000, where uh, like the, the festival founder and other couple of filmmakers put their money together and said, let's make do it into a company and start also distribution on the side to keep the festival running independently from funding as much as possible. That's the whole idea that, that we set up. Uh, it seems to work, I'm still here and I can pay my rent, and, but that's all about it. And the rest we will talk about where we see possibilities in uh, making money with short films. Is it a market or not? I think that's the question. Can I just ask something because I think we forgot it? I just wanted to know because I would like to know. Okay, it's coming on. Sorry. <laughs> Eric, please could you uh, introduce yourself to Sure, uh, my name is Eric, it's Eric Tamo from Syndicates Festival. Uh, Syndicates, if you don't know, is uh, a children's media festival in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And I say media because we are not just a film festival, but also a program TV and do media installations and have a big professional section uh, dedicated to the people in the industry who are looking for children's content of all kinds. Um, and I am the coordinator of the film department and as such I am responsible for the, the film program of Syndicates. So I help program and uh, administrate the, uh, the different sections that we show at Syndicates. Uh, this year is also going to be our 30th edition and um, we are going to present a number of uh, competitions as always, a number of feature film competitions but also a short film competition that we've now been doing for I think four or five years and that short that competition is called the best European short animation competition and I say European with, an, uh, with a big emphasis because our goal of this project was to show as many uh, films from as many different European countries as possible what we often see at different festivals is that they, they, they show short films from the, the high production countries, you know, the, the countries with many 
uh, animation studios and schools. And for this competition, we're really focused on presenting films from as many different European countries. And I think last year, we used to show between 20 and 25 different shorts. And last year, we showed, I think, films from 20 different European countries, which we're really happy about. Um, besides that competition, I'm also involved with a, a project called RAP, which we'll probably talk about a bit more later. Um, which focuses on, uh, on stimulating the circulation of feature length student films to Europe. Um, so, that is basically the gist, so I think we should probably get started. Uh, yes, although I think it seems fair that now you know who we are, we should know who you are. Um, not one by one, but I just want you to um, raise hands and and don't be worried, I will not ask you then to stand up and present yourself. Just raise hands who is working as an animate animation artist. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Who's a uh, producer? Do we have uh, TV buyers? We have no TV buyers. Um, distributors? Festival people? <laughs> Any other qualifications that we missed so far? Students? Okay. So, somebody feels neglected? <laughs> because this was what we had so far. Okay, so welcome. I just wanted to know who in the audience ever saw the film that he made. <laughs> okay, good, thanks. Good question, thank you. Um, so some of us have saw the film and have probably put it on or seen it distributed on a DVD because I think that is the first um, question that I had for Alex. Could you explain how you distribute your work in Germany through DVD and um, if you have any other formats in mind because we, in the end we will talk about cinema as well but I think uh, you should make the first step. To be honest that's a very short um, answer. There is hardly any distribution on DVD in Germany. It's, um, we tried it a couple of times with um, non-short films and also with children films and for us it didn't work out. Uh, DVD wasn't the medium. Uh, I remember the first ones we did like um, 12 years ago. We put a lot of work into it uh, with extras, interviews, um, revisiting sceneries and whatever, and also with, I think, we did subtitling in three languages. <laughs> and um, we put quite a lot in the artwork. And um, it really, and even after five years, we found out it didn't really work out. Not for the filmmakers, not for us, that it brought any money. For me, I look at DVDs as a marketing tool. That's basically what it is. Um, in terms that you have a prestigious project, something to show around. But nowadays, DVD, I think, is not important. Should I talk about other parts that we do? Or no? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, um, as a distributor, we um, the main job is what we do with cinema distribution, which is pick, picking up in the last three years in, in Germany. That has to do with the funding system in Germany, because in Germany, the, since three years, there was a change in the film funding uh, legacy uh, law, that now the cinemas uh, get money. So they get, um, if a cinema is actually renting um, short films over the whole year, they get 80% paid of the money they, uh, they pay for it. So normally what we offer as a distribution, we offer to cinemas they can have an other law, meaning they can um, rent 52 films over a whole year, so every week they can show a film or they can compile it even as programs, but they have the number of 52 films, they pay a fixed amount for it, and um, therefore they get 80% if they apply for it back from the state for showing these films. That really raised the circulation. We had a different law before, which is interesting. 
when we try to give, give the same money that, they, that they're investing now to the producers. Didn't work. Producers made copies and films, these films were never shown because the cinema was not interested in showing them because they say like that time is um, taken away from our where we could show commercials, so they didn't show it. So our the idea was um, to put the money at the end of the food chain, basically. And it seems to work in a way. I mean it's a substituted market, to be honest. You know, it's not a free market, it would be a lie. So it's substituted, but at least the money that was anyway spent is now spent in a way that films get shown. Um, to give you an idea, uh, God, I once had numbers, but these are numbers, you know. I mean, we have like 40 uh, abonnements running over the whole year that keeps at least one person busy the whole week. Uh, distributing these films, this is now easily done with uploads. Um, hardly anybody uses hard drives anymore, so we use, uh, that's the cool thing about short film, you can use new techniques for downloads because the rate is short. We didn't succeed really, we want, because most films we have on a contract also for cinema distribution internationally. But what we mainly do is the German speaking area, um, going out to Scandinavian countries, and I would say France is very hard territory because they're very well uh, they have their own films. And, um, but we do also quite a lot in Eastern Europe and in South Europe. So Europe is quite fine, but our main idea was like in terms of digital platforms that we can offer the films to Asia and South America and whatever. Um, for example, this, uh, the uh, North American market is for us completely locked. It's really hard to get films in uh, North American cinema. I will never give up, but uh, I never succeeded. The only way we succeeded was that, for example, I mean, now we have the Oscar shorts in distribution and we're bringing them back to stuff, stuff like that. So you have to, for the American market, you have to use the back door, but it's not very far-fetched. So this is the cinema distribution. And the other one is TV and online. Um, but I take it back to the beginning where you revealed the big secret that um, German cinemas get funding for playing short films. Um, is there any other country where they use the same system? Are you aware of uh... Belgium, of course. <laughs> Since you're the only Belgian in the room, I wanted to hear from Visigrad countries if maybe they have the same... Uh... It's, never, it's never used, nowhere. It definitely helps. I think that you're the, you can give us the, the numbers of how much it helps. Well, it helps a lot. I mean, um, but the important thing is how you get there. And I remember like um, 10 years ago, in Germany there was the AG Kurzfilm funded, that is the German Short Film Association. And uh, that was funded by, um, let's say, the five bigger film festivals in Berlin, together with the film schools, with the uh, DFFB in Berlin, the Konrad Wolf School, and uh, Ludwigsburg in Baden-Württemberg. Um, these three schools took part in it, and nowadays we have 50 members, we started out with five, and the whole idea was like, to have like a, an association where we have a word uh, talking to the FFR, which is the main film funding body in Germany, and uh, German films. And uh, basically what we, um, where we got now is like after 10 years we have as I said, 50 members, which includes the most important festivals, short film festivals in Germany, the film schools, and distributors. Um, and we have a say in when a new law for film funding is pa uh, passed through the legacy, which is very important. Meaning that we could really uh, put our word in when we said, like, we think it's better to use the money like that, and we really put it in the, in the new film funding law. With that comes also something that will be introduced next year. Um, where we claimed we want now that there's also uh, funding for cinemas who show children films, especially if they show children film programs, but we made the condition, which is in the law now, they just get the funding if it's accompanied by uh, school materials. I mean, uh, uh, because I think it's very important because there's a lot... Yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, but but I want, what I wanted to say, I think, it's I, I would like to encourage people, I know you need a long breath, and it's thick boards, as we say in Germany, that you have to trim, 
but it's worth it. And, and once you get a structure going, and, and you have, because you guys have something like the Visegrad uh, countries uh, working together, and, and you can you can collect your voices and, and try to find a structure organization um, where you really can talk with the funding bodies and say like, and, 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 uh, and ask for the, for the right that you have a right to say in that, and that you say we have a voice in that, you know, and we have like maybe just three percent of the funding, but we wanna we wanna uh, claim the rights how it's used. I think that's an important thing, and then, and also in Germany it took a long time, but. I know 10 years ago when we founded it, no, everybody thought it's just another um, coffee table round. Um, but now finally we really can influence a little bit the laws and they come back to us with some effects and that's, that's a good thing. I can, um, I can tell you some, or give you some arguments that we used when um, convincing the cinemas to, to play this short film program. Because as I told you, when we work with the short film programs, it's usually for the youngest audience, which means that our programs will be a maximum, have a maximum length of 45 to 60 minutes, which is of course a bit of a problem for a cinema exhibitor. Although then they realize that with such a short program, they can play a program twice in one slot, one time at three o'clock, one time at four o'clock, which means that the audience, that he, have, he has two times people passing through the candy lane, which brings in much more money than uh, selling the ticket. <laughs> and the dentist as well. Yeah. Um, so that was for them quite important, that they, they could uh, get more people inside the candy shop. Um, of course, uh, since we work, uh, since, since the whole system switched to DCP, I, I do remember the times when we had short film compilations, six films in six different formats, and it was a hell of a job for the, the cinema owner to, and, and the, uh, the guy in the projection room to get it all in the, in the right shape. Um, but nowadays this is much more easy, so that is no longer, that is a, a practical problem that is out of the way now. Um, Study guides and school materials, of course, are an, uh, a very important thing to convince schools and, and cinemas who organize school screenings, but I will, or I want to focus on schools later in our discussion. Uh, but then we also found out that when we work with small town cinemas, and we still have a couple of them in Belgium, um, for instance in Sweden, uh, I know that short film programs are all over the multiplexes. They developed it in, in, in a short time. They have now 24 multiplexes with regular short film programs. But we count, for this we count even more on the small cinemas that are able to have um, organized small site events. Uh, and we as a distributor, uh, distributor try to provide them with, with materials. They have little workshops with children to do their own short animations or to make this um, finger books or whatever. Um, it really helps for short film when you have when you organize a special screening with some added value and that helped us a lot to convince the audience and the cinema owners. Um, and I think that you have uh, Eric, do you have some some experience with this uh, reaching out to cinemas all over the country? Yes, um, what we do is Syndicate is that Syndicate is, is held at, uh, in Amsterdam, but we also have around 30 or 40 satellite festivals across uh, the Netherlands. And all those different smaller festivals, they show a, a segment of our programming, usually five films, five feature films from our, from our program, and then they add, you know, they add the program where it's all sorts of films that are currently in distribution in the Netherlands. But what we've done in the, in the past, and we probably will do this year as well, is uh, that we take one of the, of the compilation programs that we made from our, uh, from our European Short Animation Competition and allow that compilation disc to also travel along those 40, 40 different cities. And what I would like to add uh, to your story about educational um, uh, materials, of course that's essential to get the audience involved in the process. 
But the step before that, the way we are talking to on the discussion now is that for a festival, you know, we want to show as many short films as possible, but uh, strangely enough, the cost of showing short films can be much higher than showing feature films because you're making the cost for translation for every different short film, especially when you're using uh, films from many different countries. So um, our competition has been completely focused on short films without dialogue or with very limited dialogue. And as I know I'm not sure what your experience is, but for children this is probably also the best way to present short films, especially for the younger ones. Um, from our competition, from our 25 films, we've been taking uh, like two or three different compilation programs where it's between six or eight different films, so 45 minutes, 50 minutes like you said, and we're focusing, focusing them on uh, children around four years old, six year old, six year old and eight year olds. We found that uh, for our festival that's probably the best target audience, but uh, also for tutors they are really looking for those kind of compilations. And uh, um, I'm not sure what your question actually was, but I sort of started talking about stuff. Um, did I answer your question? Which you know, you know, account, yes. Um, so yeah, with with that, pro with that satellite program, we, you know, we, we, we're showing uh, the compilation in many different cities and not just Amsterdam. And actually, we've been working together with uh, a few festivals abroad, um, like the Perfect International Art Festival in Australia, to allow the, the, the entire competition to travel to different countries. And since it doesn't need translating, that really simplifies the process a lot. You basically just send the, the DCPs or the one DCP to uh, to the country and you're done. Um, the time of uh, DV camps and uh, 8 millimeters is thankfully over, so the process is much simpler. Um, but that, that's sort of the sort of ways that as a festival you try to improve the you know the visibility of your work. Uh, I have a next question in mind, but maybe. Since, uh, or before we're running out of oxygen, I can. Uh, yes, thank you. Meaning that puts us as a distributor in a safe place. We can sell abonnements, so we have safe money. We know if you book an abonnement, let's say I know I have 40 abonnements, I know that's safe money I get this year on my films, right? So I can already use the money that I'm probably earning to, um, to help producing films. We're not producing, but what we do as a distributor, we give out letters of interest especially for German films and German co-production, co-productions with German uh, productions, um, that helps them getting funding. Uh, what, and what we can do is then, uh, for example, that we already can do a letter of interest where we say like, well, we take, we probably will take this film, if it turns out as well as it sounds, um, into distribution and we can pay upfront money for the production. You know? So we can do deals like that. That was money we never had access for before, it's just for us much safer. That's the indirect way. The other way, I mean, in Germany we have film funding, the traditional film funding like most countries probably have. In Germany, the lucky thing is we have a lot of, we have 16 states, so we have state funding and we have federal stuff funding. The federal funding is called FFR, oh, very important short abbreviation, if you have to to remember, FFR, Film Förderungsanstalt. They have a lot of money, they don't spend enough on short films, I think all over in Germany in the moment is 4 million spent on short films, that's a joke. Um, I think the short film festivals give out from prize money altogether 1 million to short films, we collected at once. 
So we are the fifth part of the funding in Germany. But the important thing to know is like if you have a German, if a German uh, film takes part in a competition in and in certain films which are on the list of the film uh, of the FFR, they have a list of festivals which they claim to be important for short films. A lot of them are German, but not all of them. There are also international short film festivals on it. And if you, as a German film uh, maker or producer, enter your film there and it's running there and it wins a prize, um, or if it's a co production, so that's what gets interesting for you if you have a German co production partner and you enter a film, you win points to the FFR funding system, meaning your film is running in a competition in one of those festivals, you uh, gain 10 points. If you win a, a prize in a competition, you get 15 points. Uh, last year, the highest turnout was like a film that collected, um, I think, 80 points, got 100,000 euros. So something you can work with. Uh, it depends always how much money is in the pot that's really given out to all the people who collect the points. But a lot of producers don't know about it, so please spread the word. And I think it's very important when you think co-production, you get somebody on board, or you want to do a German co-production, that could be an asset to be doing production. So we have another quick question. <laughs> yeah. So you said these points, so you get, I didn't understand, but yeah. if, let's say, if you get to Clermont-Ferrand Festival, and you get 10 points, but, but if you go to, I don't know, I don't know, go, go short somewhere, yeah. the point also is, do you get another 10 points? So it's not one time. No, no, it's one time. For every, no, no, it's for every festival. For every festival that's on the list, it's got to be on the list. And uh, as I said before, the uh, AG Kurz film, we, we, um, we can decide with the FFR on the list. There's obviously limitations. They said, like, look, just 20 festivals are supposed to be on the list. Well, for example, it's very hard for us to find American festivals that we want to have on the list. You know, I think at the moment it's Tribeca and Palm Springs. Um, Aspen is always the candidate, but we're never sure like who takes really care in the States for short film. Since uh, the Canada broke away with the Worldwide Short Film Festival, it was a very good gateway to the North American market. Well, China is a different issue anyway. So. There was another question. Uh, hello, I have uh, one question. Uh, we already made uh, some co-production with uh, between Georgia and German, and we have finished it. And besides the festival pass, how can we raise some money and distribute this film? Sorry, the co-production is the Georgian. Co-production Georgia German. We want Robert Bosch Prize. Okay. Okay. And how, besides the festival pass, how can we? Yeah, well, one, one thing would to look for a distributor, obviously, because I think a lot of producers think that if, if, it depends really on the film, to be honest. Like some films have a long life, and yeah, yeah, um, well, you should look for a distributor if you don't have one. I mean, it's silly to have a festival um, circuit running and not looking straight away for a distributor because you should take this impact of festivals, maybe, if you run in competitions. It's nice for the distributor, <coughs> pointing at me, but it's nice for any distributor. Um, they can't normally, to be honest, a um, lot of filmmakers expect from a distributor that they take part, uh, that they take charge of the festival entries, um, making a real plan for the run of the uh, film. I've, I gotta be honest, it's hardly possible. If Thinking of 30 films you take every in your catalog. You try to help as much as possible, you give tips, but every film needs its own strategy and that should be actually part of the producer also. But for the distributor, on the way, there always has to be communication. It's very good to have the uh, feedback like, ah, we're planning to run there and there. So we can think about, oh, what would make sense uh, with that, you know, to have a marketing strategy. Um, but there's no big money behind it, so we really have to work about network. That's really important, and that's what festivals and distributors have. You know. They can tell, are oh, you going to Annecy? Good. You know, we know who's going there. There's the AG Kurz film. Try to get on the list of the AG Kurz film. What parties are important there? We have to be stuff like that. It's, it's very personal. But then, uh, uh, actually, our main goal is to convince that it's, it's, it's worth making these productions. But then I think the, the audience that you'll find here. That's, uh, most of them are people who are probably in the same position as you are, so I don't think we should give you um, the answer on how to do it, but I think that first of all you should exchange information with the other people at present and, and uh, 
come to places like, for instance, Valve, which is of course a, a very useful place to be, where you can meet people who are in the same position as you, and, and that could already be a, a start to gather yeah, some advice. But Tom, you had another. I mean, um, I just know what, what we are doing, we come out of the festival, so it's a, a very, um, okay, our distribution was based on, on that we did a festival and wanted to work with the content of the year. That, that was the basic idea. We had our own experience as filmmakers and thought we could do more with short films. All the rest we learned by doing, you know, so that, that's how we started. And it's our own money, uh, there's no other investor or whatever. Um, and as I said, we have 300 films, and we distribute to with the abonnement system to cinemas. Um, we're part of different networks where we show films. With what we talked before about uh, also we have a kind of a circulation with the Goethe Institute, which um, show f films worldwide and not just German films. That's a complete misunderstanding. The, the Goethe Institute show international films, mainly European films. And it's more about the themes, and um, we sell to TV and online platforms and closed circuit. So that's what we do. Um, and beyond that, what I said, we can't offer special marketing strategies um, for festivals or whatever because we just don't have the capacity to be honest. But we pick the films that we think, from our experience of 15 years running a distribution, would work in one or the other way. Half of the time it works, half uh, of the time not. Uh, 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 I, think, I think I'm the other distributor, but we, we come from a totally different background because you start with promoting and distributing short films. I start with promoting and distributing children's films. And by coincidence, throughout the years, we discovered that short film could be another <coughs> interesting format for children. <coughs> In general, we always, we, for, for 30 years, this company has been distributing only feature films until we found out, and actually, who did us, who helped us to find out? The Mole from Czech Republic. That was the, the, yeah, that was the first one. And together with the, in, with the Swedish experience, where they started with Pingu, the first uh, short film compilation in Sweden that was really successful was Pingu, but in our case, in Belgium, it was The Mole. Um, so we found out that uh, every age category needs a different format of film and for the youngest audience it's very good to have the short films um, because the, the duration of the film but also because they like the element of repeat that is often there every episode starts in the same way so this very unexperienced audience has, has some moments to to relax and to get everything together before the next movie starts. So for us, uh, short film was especially the perfect uh, way to reach out to the, the youngest audience. But I think that's the, the main difference between both companies is that uh, for us it's children's film comes first and for you it's short film that comes first. Um, well, I'm not a distributor. Um, a syndicate is more interested in, in promoting the circulation, basically. And what we, what, for instance, what we do at the festival is that we have a screening club, which is part of a professional section. And that's uh, like a video library system where both well, feature length films, short films, and TV series are included that can be like, binge watched by professionals who want to make an acquisition, like distributors who want to, who want to buy short films for. You. Um, so we, we mostly support the distribution process, but we're not a distributor ourselves. Uh, we do, we are currently uh, involved in a, pro in a project called Rap, which we were just talking about, which is focused on feature films. And this is a European supported project, um, collaboration between five different countries, uh, institutes and festivals from countries that work together to acquire the educational rights for feature films. And Presenting those films like as a catalog to schools and education institutes in those countries. We're currently only focusing on feature films um, because, especially in like the, the other countries like Poland, Norway, Sweden, and Finland, that, um, 
there isn't just there, is, there just isn't that many uh, feature films available for these purposes. So, you know, you know uh, just uh, on an educational basis or it's educational materials to support the screens. But I can imagine we might branch out in the future to also include short films if there's demand for that. But since there are other initiatives as well for that, it's not currently in the cards, but we might do so in the future. I'd like to go back in time, 30 minutes, when I asked, are there any distributors here? I remember that at least three hands were raised somewhere over there. Um, can you share some experience with us uh, about how you have been distributing short films? Yeah, I think, uh, it's harder because we do the distribution here in Czech Republic and there's actually no market for short films anywhere. Uh, and there is no market for short films in Czech Republic in general, so it's very hard, I would say. But uh, what we are focusing on is uh, distribution of, of short children films, which we make in compilations. And it's the second year for us. We have uh, uh, for now four uh, different compilations and we divide them like for smaller children and for older. And it's mainly combined from student films from all over Czech Republic. And I would say that uh, the interest in the interest from the cinemas is very small. Like it's very hard to convince the the cinemas to even show the films. Our main idea was that we wanted to make uh, projections for schools. So the schools go to the nearest cinema in the different city. But uh, we found out, found out that it's really hard to convince them to, to communicate to each other. Like uh, the school is interested, the cinema is interested, but they're totally not, not able to just pick up the phone and say, okay, we're coming this day and this day, please show us the film. So, I don't know. Well, we're trying to convince everybody that it's worth doing it and that we got nothing but complaints, it's difficult. Yes, of course it's difficult and it's hard, but the only thing that I do not agree with is that you said there is no market, because I'm sure there is a market, but they don't know it yet, because you didn't tell them yet that they are the market. Sorry, just before the next question, I want to answer that. I know that this problem exactly was at least the same in 10 years ago in Germany. Um, there was no communication and it was impossible to get the schools to come to the cinema. There was a big discussion, oh, should we then go with the films into the schools? No, no, no. But the teachers laughed, obviously. But um, for us, we believe very strongly we want to get the kids out of school. Because I think cinema should be an experience in its own. And, and it makes, and my experience is really the same. It makes kids freer if they're not see it under the, you know. I mean, you need a change of room and atmosphere to, to have an idea what a film is about. And, uh, and not that it's part of the, you know, what the school is feeding you. Um, but um, in Germany we have since 10 years now, we have the, um, God, I don't know if this was German, what is that? Uh, the Schul Kino Wochen, the school cinema weeks. And every state is organizing that. There's a federal agency that was created for that, uh, which is basically just three people by the paid by the state coordinating all of that and all the 16 states do their own uh, school cinema weeks and these agencies is actually collecting data from schools and cinemas and, and passes them on and then they have federal uh, state offices or people who organize it in the different states so in Berlin for example is one week and they show feature films short films for one week in cinemas and schools book into that that works quite well by now, but it's also an initiative again that we need the funding and stuff. Um, but through that we have quite a good network now, of, and we know uh, what the schools want, they know what to expect. I think that's the most important thing for teachers, they're super scared. And, um, and as we all, I think, experienced on some festivals, uh, because lots of teachers don't know about film. So, and if they don't know about they can't talk about, and then they're scared, you know, to whatever authority and the next they have. And, Things like that, um, they all play into it. But communicating and having this database so 
maybe if you set up the database, I don't know how you get to the connection of a region for the schools and centers. That's one thing that was very cr crucial for the, the success that we had in, in uh, distributing these compilations. That is how those compilations are compiled. Um, and to be honest, yeah, the, the way that you work for us was all with, never never worked in Belgium. Uh, the only success that we had was when we compiled six or seven films about the main uh, the same character, which is of course the most uh, well known formula. That the, like we did it with the mole and, and like we did with uh, Lab and the Little Ghost or with Pingu or with Spot and Splotch or uh, Capelito from Spain or whatever. Um, in France, they have this tradition of compiling. Well, it, it, they have it all over the world, but it's very in French. It's, uh, in France, it's very successful. This idea of compiling films from the same region. There is this very successful compilation circulating in France. It's called uh, Slavic Tales. Uh, we had the same with uh, Estonian films from one studio. Or you can work with uh, films about the same team, uh, which often happens and then come up with study material, study guides about the, the team that we, like we successfully did with uh, the Rainbow Project in, in ECFA about uh, the world of gay and lesbian people. But we also did it, and, and that's something that you mentioned in our previous conversations as well. We've seen the same happening with um, language uh, courses, or how you should describe it. We had a project in Belgium that was called Cine Mini, uh, compiling seven short films in French language. I come from the non French speaking part of the country, so we distributed in French schools. We had specialized uh, French teachers making exercises about the vocabulary used in, in every of those films, so they could very easily integrate these, these uh, films in their, um, in their French curriculum. So all this kind of thematical or, or uh, characterial aspects help to put some compilation together that, that, is not, that doesn't feel like a random compilation of, of films which is very important for us. Can I add something to that? Um, for example, we, we were not a big fan of compiling characters together. I found it quite exhausting. That was our personal approach. Um, and we also had some experience with, with theme related um, programs. Some work, some don't. I think it's very hard um, and it's very important to keep in touch with the teachers. Um, what they're really looking out for or what they think they work. Sometimes they think they know what, what works, and, but sometimes you know they have their agenda that they want to work with. So environmental themes could work. Bullying, obviously, in school is a big theme. Um, but coming back to the language, um, at our festival, and also at the distribution, we had very good experience with the language programs that we invented at our festival. That's a good thing we can test out at our festival. So at Cookie, for the children uh, in teen screen section, we have 7,000 um, kids audience. So it's, it's very good for us now to to know what, what works or not, and we can test out how far we can go or how far not. And with the language programs, what we do is like we do it for Spanish, English, and French, meaning we do it for the age group 14 years and up, because they obviously have more um, um, experience in the language in school, um, and we subtitle these films in the original language, because sometimes it's very here, you hear somebody Spanish um, talking, and but if he comes from Argentina, you have no idea what they're saying because you're not used to the dialect. So we do the subtitling. It helps enormously, and the teachers love it. And then they get a um, like material with certain vocabulary and certain cultural backgrounds because that's what's the most important thing. Not just to teach the, um, the language, but the cultural background that's transported with it. So if you have a French-speaking film that comes from Morocco, we can always tackle certain themes. Um, I know that sounds like a lot of work, but the, the nice thing is, it's actually, I think, in, uh, in these days, it's not so much work and so much investment, um, because really digitally you can do it quite well. And I just can encourage to do it, because once you're sure that, or once you have the feeling of good work, um, it really takes uh, 
fruits because first it's something if you believe in it it's something that's more fun and um, through that you get a trust of the of the schools and the cinemas and that will work out later you, you have to think i think in long term of three years if you can stand like that and then maybe you can work with other films and materials because you have to trust you know and the people say like oh that's the so-and-so distribution offering that a little bit that's that's what we experienced in the long run because I remember the first five years we tried so much out and a lot of it didn't work. It's just the truth, it didn't work. You know? I know like 2001 to 2004 we tried programs, 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 programs didn't work. Everybody just wanted to have a front-running film. And now we're turning back to the programs again after having some experience and it obviously didn't work. And now they're all colorful programs. So sometimes you don't know. But you need no prep for the short films. Oh, sorry. Uh, hi, so I'm from a Slovak animation festival, so we're not a, like a proper distributor, but then we have a distribution experience where our best of compilation that we screen every year after the festival, you know, the, all the awarded films and stuff like that. And uh, what, what you didn't talk about, and I would like to hear your opinion or your personal experience on it, uh, are there any other places that are suitable for distribution? Because from what I found out, it's even though the cinemas don't really care for short films in Slovakia at all, there are other, other spaces and places like cultural or art, artistic hubs, smaller local festivals, music festivals, art festivals and all these types of places that are actually very, very interested and uh, oftentimes they, they actually reach out to us to screen. We don't even have to you know, contact them for the screenings. This is uh, a question that might be answered by the three of us because you have Quite some, first, I'll, I'll tell you what I, what I know from my personal experience. Uh, we have much more impact in the small cultural centers, local local cultural centers, much more than, than in the cinemas. But what you what you somehow uh, mentioned is that, that with a little um, creative thinking, you can you can find many other venues where you can screen these things and. Often for us, such screenings were the, the most uh, well gave us the most satisfaction. And, and for instance, we had the same uh, uh, Belgian festival that was screening the best of selection in the um, uh, Museum of Modern Art section for children. Um, yeah, actually, a, a lot of uh, it's very easy to find the connection for us with organizations who work with art. Uh, for children and, and film for children, so that was very successful for us. Yeah, for us, I think um, as a festival we get a lot of requests, um, you know, for the film that we show, and for feature films it's not as easy to accommodate uh, those people, but for short films um, it is often. Um, what I what often happens is, um, like you said, like cultural, cultural house, or cultural institutions, like small. Um, small cultural places. They are also interested in, uh, in programming for for weekly weekly events, uh, especially if there's like a team involved. I, I remember that just previous to uh, to leaving to come here, I think uh, we got like three different requests for. Do you have any uh, short films uh, about immigration or about you know those, those kind of topics? Uh, people are really interested in like uh, like like. Like sort of uh, linking something to recent news events, and as a festival, you know, we, of course, we have a catalog of short films like like you have, and so we didn't always accommodate them, and even if we would want them, and we have to, we would have clear rights, and still, it's the question of we only have a DCP, and they probably need a DVD or whatever, but still, um, yeah, I think you have to be creative. You have to like uh, look. And see what's happening in your in your city or your region. What what kind of events are being organized? Are there any partners you could probably you know, could work together with? Um, but there's no easy answer. I think there is not one. One one thing that is often used these days is the. Oh, it's about time. Um, is uh, this online platform that we have for schools, that we're developing for schools. The negative, well, the positive side is that you make films very easily accessible for schools. The negative side for me is that you start working only topic-based. 
Um, yeah, we need something about refugees. Oh yeah, we have one film for refugees, then this film is screened, schools work about it, uh, work around it, and that's it. You don't really promote short film as an, as an art form. So that's for me on the negative side, and also what you just came to mention. For me, the ideal circumstances is that films are seen in cinemas or in other venues that kind of challenge children and not on the whiteboard in, in the classroom. But of course, this is a, a new way of bringing your films very easily uh, to your audience. I mean, obviously there are different strategies and a lot got tried out and hopefully there come more new ideas. But for example, what we also did, always on the side, with one, uh, um, with one strain we call Shorts Attack, that's running since 13 years now. Every month we put together a program, a theme-related program. It can be something silly, we buy something like buy the pool, it can be something serious about uh, nuclear waste and whatever, but uh, so it's put together a theme program for, uh, and we offer it as a distributor for one month only, just one month. Meaning we can work from our own catalog using films that relate to the theme, but we also buy in films. But the trick is we just buy them for one month and we do a couple of screening within German speaking, the German speaking area. And we have a network of, we always know that at least 30 cinemas and student clubs and institutions booking that for a certain price. And what they do, they work with the theme. They do a reading afterwards or concert or whatever, they work it in. And uh, the funny thing is, like in the four, first four or five years, uh, it was really like, it didn't make any money, but, but it just was a zero number. And, and then it picked up, and now it's running always on the side, and it fits one person working with it, and uh, gets a turnover for the filmmakers. And, it's, and that's the fun part, because you can work with the film. But, it, but as you said, Eric, there's no easy answer. And uh, what we said before with uh, where, to, where to distribute films, I mean, distribution we couldn't cover now the theme of TV and, uh, and other possibilities. And what for our distribution, since we started to work uh, stronger with uh, children films from our festival and also distribution, was a lucky strike that um, since two years we uh, actually, we, like an agent for uh, the German uh, educational, how you call it? Um, education uh, co copy house, uh, which is called oh, yeah. Cornelius and uh, Publicist. Um, so basically, um, we're selling films to Cornelius and um, to publishing house Cornelius and for schools. So they make the materials because they didn't have a clue about short films. They tried to try to uh, to do acquisitions and invite it. And then that's very nice because that's good money for filmmakers. Um, I can feel you getting a little bit restless, but there's one little thing that I would like you to be convinced about before we uh, leave this auditorium. And we only need Perfect. two minutes to do that. Can we have those two minutes? Uh, I want you to convince about um, not to underestimate your audience. And that's why I want to ask this question to the three people on stage. What was the most daring project, the most courageous project that you did in distributing for children? Well, something that we did last year, which I found was quite interesting and quite um, original, was, like I said, we had, we had this collaboration with the Perth Film Festival in, uh, in Australia, and as you know, Perth is probably the most isolated major city in the world. Um, our whole competition went to, to their, their, their festival in Perth, but they then, again, we just organized uh, smaller uh, screenings in the whole rural area, you know, in the outback basically of Australia. And, you know, from a small town to like, I don't know, people live in a small town in Australia, but probably more sheep than people. But it was a very interesting idea of you know, getting sort of, sort of forgetting about the idea of borders, forgetting about the idea of festivals and just having that TCP or having a good on DVD even at that point and just sending it out and having people just show, show it in probably very small, not just cinemas, but like organization, uh, cultural houses or maybe even just a person house. 
um, a lot of interesting projects for us, you know, something we never did before, and I think we probably won't probably not very you know, visible when it comes to like audience numbers, but it's very interesting for us people, very important for us people to to see something they probably would never see uh, in the same way. Okay, thank you. Um, for us, regarding short films, the most daring project I think that um, that we had was a uh, no, well. We once, we once acquired the rights to a film made by Rosto, you know, uh, the crazy animator, Dutch animator who's in the, in the main competition jury and whose work is known to be very sinister and very dark. But we bought one of his films called The Monster of Nyx and distributed it very successfully to a Belgian audience of uh, under 12 year old kids and it was it was a major success they they all liked his his way of storytelling his narratives his his approach to uh, very dark themes so a film that was considered to be a strictly uh, freaked out grown up underground audience apparently worked also with a 12 year old audience um yeah one well, um, also, because we're talking children and short films, um, um, I would point out a project that we took on two years ago when it was still not finished, and that was the children short film Alienation, which is an um, animated documentary, one of those wonderful hybrid films where I think short film can be the strongest, but holds all the promises that film can have, which you don't see in mainstream cinema anymore. And the basic idea was very simple. We they make interviews with teenagers about puberty and their body experience about themselves. And uh, to that, they animated them as monsters. And we thought, oh, that could be very harsh. And we knew the work from the, from the director before. So we gave him a lot of interest and helped him to get some funding in a way. And well, lucky enough, it, it, it was like the film came out and it was lying around for three or four months. We weren't sure what would happen. And, um, but as you said before, we showed it already to teenagers and talked to them about it. And that was very interesting. And that film is, is in a way, now it's a burner. It won the Deutsche Kurzfilm Prize, which is very highly dotated. It's doing very well in sales now. Um, and this film just, it's, it's just what we call an abräumer. It takes all the prizes now. And, and it's very just nice, and it's a very simple idea, but it's but it's so full of character because it's the real voices from from these teenagers. And uh, what Gerd said before, I think when I talked to the filmmaker, um, they really took a lot of effort talking to the teenagers and thinking about the audience, how they want to approach it, and that really comes through in that film. That they really thought, what can we do, and um, didn't went too far. Less is more. Sometimes with films like So that was about not underestimating your audience. I hope we didn't underestimate our audience today. Um, we would have never guessed that the questions came so quickly and so early, and I'm afraid that there might be even more questions. So feel free to grab these two guys. Uh, these three guys. I'd like to thank you, Eric. Uh, uh, Gert and uh, Alex, uh, so I'd like to thank you for the presentation and uh, yeah, I think you definitely not, uh, uh, that I, I, really like, I really, really like to think that you are finished with the projects and, that, and the idea that it's worth to there. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you for the, for the presentation, for the panel. Right. Thanks a lot.